But I will say Mondays are better with all of you and Mondays are definitely better with a little mojo. So I am excited to get right into this and talk to you a little bit about um, our emotions again. I think that's something that many of us can uh, stand to really examine. And, um, you know, studies have long shown that stress uh, can really do a lot of negative uh, and lasting damage to ourselves, to our bodies, to our emotions. And this morning I wanted to start our mojo off with uh, some tactics on how to deal with difficult people. And I think you could take out the word people and insert situation, you could insert 2020. Um, we know that we are dealing with a lot of different stressors today. We're dealing with a lot of change and adversity, and we, we always have and we always will. Sometimes though, the stress barometer can go much higher than, than normal. And so I thought it was important for us to talk a little bit about understanding this and how to break down um, not just the tactics on how to deal with, with that situation or that individual, but also to understand a little bit more about ourselves and, and, and behavior in general. So human behavior is kind of my thing. And uh, that's, that's where I like to really kind of dig in and help people look at it from a different perspective. So I think we've all had the experience of dealing with someone in our lives who is difficult. It could be a coworker, it could be a boss, it could be a, a family member, mother, mother-in-law, friend, uh, uh, dad, whoever that individual may be. And of course, depending on the, the relationship that we have with that individual, that certainly can add to the stress level too, right? So if you're dealing with uh, a difficult parent, that, that can be a higher level of stress than maybe even dealing with a difficult coworker or perhaps not because we're all very unique and individual. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the effects of stress on us can be very alarming. And exposure to even just a few days of continued stress uh, can really affect your nervous system. And it affects a part of the brain that is actually responsible for reasoning and um, logic. And so, if you're under stress for a, a long period of time and this part of your brain is being effective, then you're actually diminishing your capability to deal with the stress because that is the part of the brain that would help you. So that's why it's really important that we work through this and, and we realize a couple of things. Number one, it is impossible to live a stress-free life. It is absolutely impossible to live a stress-free life because there's always gonna be some factor that is going to affect us. There's always gonna be something in our environment. There's always gonna be something that we choose to watch on the TV or, or something happening around us that is going to create a response. And that's what stress is, it's a response. See, the event itself is not actually the stress, if you think about it. Right, good to see. Right? <laughs> Because if that were true, then we would all react the same way or, or in similar fashion, right? So the event itself is not the stress. It's how you decide to, well, first it's how you interpret it and then it's how you decide to respond to it. So um, I think I shared this uh, on a previous mojo, but if you wanna write this down, E plus R equals O. This formula might help you um, because what that represents is event, that's the E, event, plus R, your response, is what determines your outcome or how you choose to um, relate to it and, and move forward from it or not. So, so that's really something that I want to make clear first, is that the events themselves are not the stress, it's not the stress, it's how you interpret it and respond to it. So your ability to, to uh, manage your emotions and remain calm under pressure, remain logical, uh, remain uh, somewhat neutral is going to be your best weapon or your best asset or tool in combating this, okay? So 
I know, as I said, that we've run across numerous people in our lives or situations that might be, you know, stressful. Let's take a look at that first, right? So what, how do we determine that an individual is difficult? I think that um, it's probably showing up in their behavior, right? I mean, is anybody here on Zoom, you wanna jump in, feel free. You know, when you have had an experience with a difficult person, how would you define a difficult person? Someone that doesn't listen, someone okay. that, that d displays um, body language that d clearly <laughs> shows that either they're disinterested, they don't like and can't, it, and they anticipate something that's going to happen that's not going to settle right with them. And, um, and then you take it from there because then we have your side, my side, and then all the other negotiations that work around trying to reach that person. Um, if they're distracted or deliberately distracting themselves, it's you know a matter of timing. But if you're scheduling a time to have a discussion, that also heightens the way in which the dynamic might come down. Okay, yes, there's a lot in that. We're gonna unpack some of that. So yeah, I think um, a difficult person may be someone who is on the defensive, maybe closed off, uh, someone who may not be listening, um, someone who may be um, challenged by something themselves, right? They may be under some kind of stress themselves. Um, what, what else might make someone difficult? Uh, they could be demanding. They could be somewhat- Hostility. Uh, say it again, Sarah. Hostility. Sorry, Hostility. I'm walking the dog here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Hostility. Yeah, they may be um, not as compassionate, right, or judgmental, right? So basically, the, the definition of a difficult person is going to change with all of us. Just like if I asked you what is the definition of success, we're all going to have a different version of success because it's what's important to us. So when we talk about a difficult person, realize that that definition is going to change by each one of us interpreting that person in that situation differently. Right? Have you ever been around someone who some people can just really, um, they can navigate that, that, that relationship better than others, right? So, so it's also very personal. Again, it comes back to us. It comes back to how we respond and how we interpret. So I just want to put that out there too. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. yeah. So if that is all true, then it would stand to reason that a lot of these tactics really rely on, on our ability to sometimes take a quick time out and assess the situation. So in no particular order, one of the first things that I would tell you about dealing with a difficult person and or situation is, is if possible to do that, to take a time out and to really assess what's going on. And probably ask yourself that very question, like what's going on right now? And if you could seek first to understand the situation, then it may give you the information you need to process it. And in doing that, it's really, if at all possible for you to maintain your, your conscious mind and to really stay in your conscious mind, I should say, and to really manage your emotions. Because if you're, if you're able to stay calm and neutral, you're gonna stay in, in logic as much as possible, right? So logic makes us think and emotions make us act. So if you meet emotion, whatever that emotion is that's coming at you from this difficult person and you meet emotion as well, whatever the, emo it could be a different emotion, but it's just creating this, this frenzy of emotion, then you're not thinking logically either. And then you're not gonna be as equipped to come up with the ways to deal with, with the person or, or their behavior. And I think that's the next thing I wanna make clear is that you're dealing with a person's behavior a lot of times. They may be a good person. They may be someone that is lovable and, and is someone that you can uh, connect with at a different time, but it may be their emotions and their behavior that is showing up right now, okay? And then, there, there are some people who have made choices and who have gotten stuck in behavior that's created a habit and they are really living life in a very um, hostile, challenged, difficult way and it may become part of their natural mode, right? 
So, so it's, it's important to, at all possible, if at all possible and whenever possible, to really just assess what is going on. What is happening with this person? Are they having a moment? Are they involved? Are they you know, stuck in something difficult right now? Are they challenged by something right now? And if you could try to be somewhat compassionate, it may not only give you the ability to diffuse the situation for a minute, but it may also give you uh, the, op the opportunity to figure out some strategies too, right? To right. have some tools. Okay, so a lot of information is available to you when you start to research things online. And um, one of the things that I found in, in a little bit of my research is um, that you also cannot be attached to the outcome. And this is, a, this is a tough one, I think, for a lot of us. In other words, you may not win them over. You may not win over the situation. You may have to just navigate it a little bit and hold on to uh, the, the ship in the, in the stormy waters um, and just be prepared that it's not about winning. It is not about trying to convince this difficult person to see things your way. It is not about trying to master the situation. It is not about trying to get them to see it from your point of view. And I think that first it is about compassion and second it is about trying to have some understanding and, and try to get to a neutral place. Now, every situation is gonna be different. If, if you're dealing with uh, a difficult family member, you, you know, that's a different set of tools than dealing with a difficult coworker or de dealing with a difficult client, right? So, so that's also important to note that you may have to use different tools depending on the relationship. Um, at the end of the day, I don't think anyone deserves to be mistreated. I don't think anyone deserves to be in something that's toxic. Um, but I do recognize that if the person that we're talking about is your parent, it may not be so easy, depending on the situation, to completely you know, walk away or diffuse it all the time. So being able to control your emotions is going to become really important. Um, and as I said, the other thing is don't judge, right? We don't know what they might be going through. And remember, we're all, who we are today is a result of all of our programming. So all of the experiences that we've had and, and all of the things that we have uh, learned, all the things we have seen and experienced, all the things that we have been taught is all shaping who we are today. So that, that person who's challenging you at any given moment is probably dealing with, with something you know, that may have been programmed into them for quite a while. So that's why I say you may not be able to fix it. You may not be able to change it, certainly not in just one conversation. So then I think it comes back to, okay, so if, if I am responsible for the outcome because I choose how I respond to this, I have to figure out how I can get through this uh, because it's really about the only thing you can control is you. And so if you're taking some notes, I'd say that's another thing is realize that you cannot control their behavior. You can try to understand it. The only behavior you can control is your own. So, so that is really key. So we can't demand that they see things our way. We can't demand that they're going to be compliant with whatever we need. Um, and it's really important, and I know this is hard, it, to not get defensive and to not respond, as I said a minute ago, with your own um, anger or emotions or whatever might show up, even though I, I would say that whatever you're feeling is probably going to be justified. It's just if we can stay in that, in, in more of a neutral zone, we, we maintain our logic and we maintain reasoning over emotion. Because when emotion meets emotion, it creates a storm and then no one's listening. And then everyone's taking things very personally. It, it, whatever is happening goes down into this deeper level that really feels like it's cutting. And, and I like to believe that most people that you would probably put in the category of being difficult is, is probably a lot of times not even aware of their own behavior. Have you ever had that experience where you realize, I don't even know if this person understands how they show up in the world, right? 
And so when our inside world, the way we think is different than the way that we show up on our outside world, that can cause a lot of stress too. So the interesting thing is, I think the difficult person is under their own severe stress. And this is how they act out because they're trying to, to manage their own emotions. So I just want to go into the chat for a minute. So Jill, um, you have a comment in here. So you were differentiating the difficult person in a personal dynamic versus a business relationship. Um, I think that they show up, they can show up differently. Wouldn't you agree? They can. I think the sort of the expectation before you went to a room with people that you know you have to sit down with and talk through either issues, contracts, or even family dynamics or something that you know, you said, I said, I'm sorry, I should have said this, but you know, where you can reconcile. So it seems to like there are different expectations per your next step, wherever that is, you know, you have a different relationship with an old time friend who pissed you off, you know, <laughs> versus your kid brother who's been stabbing you all your life and all of a sudden you had to deal with something, you know, they're, mm -hmm. the, the, the approach though, I, I, you know, it's a great reminder about the event and the trigger and how sort of existentially you've got to pull yourself into the moment and try to be as neutral that I think because you bring your baggage or you bring your experiences. Absolutely. You're not, a, you're not a you know, blank slate when you go into a situation. Absolutely. And listen, I'm certainly not saying it's easy either. Like I recognize how difficult it can be, especially if, if as I said, so, so this will change or vary depending on who the person is that you're dealing with, right? So, right. so the responses you have to a difficult boss uh, may may result in different feelings than the way you're responding to a difficult parent or sibling, right? Because those are people who, okay, so I'm going to say a word I don't like. Those are people who should, right, be treating you with love and support and compassion. And the reason why I say should is because should is such a, it's, oh, such a, it's, a, it's a word that keeps you stuck, right? So is it that it, you should or you shouldn't, right? What does that mean? So there's, there's, it lacks intention. So I think we have to understand that, you know, even the people who we're, um, who we call family, right? Um, they're just as human as everyone else in the world. I can't control my, my family member's behavior any more than I can control, you know, the person across the conference room table or on Zoom or, or the client because, um, it, it is about, this is all about human behavior. And that's why I say as, as challenging as it is, one of the first steps is to try to make sure you center yourself in, if possible, in a curiosity, in the mode of curiosity, right? Like what's going on here? What's, what's happening? And I'm not saying that you should try to analyze the other person with the other person though. I want to be clear about that too. So in other words, you're not going to be like, okay, okay, time out, time out, Jill, 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 listen, listen. Let's just calm down. Let's just, you know, what's going on with you today? You know, because when you do that with someone who is difficult and we're using that in quotes too, because you can insert a lot of words in, in that place. Um, most times that is only going to incinerate and create a big <laughs> problem. So I'm saying that th these are your tools, right? These are your strategies. This is not, I'm not asking you to play counselor or therapist with this person, but I'm helping you come up with the tools so that you don't get sucked into the emotional vortex of what's going on with this, the, the, with this person at this moment. And again, you could take out person and insert situation. Um, and, and even like, listen, 2020 is a hot mess, guys. <laughs> It, this, I mean, I'm maintaining my positive outlook, don't get me wrong, but let's just call it what it is. 2020 is a, is a crazy year full of a lot of challenges and in and, and a lot of different areas, but we get up every day and we meet the day, right? So even like, look at it that way. So I want to inspire you to know you have the ability to to deal with, with hard stuff, right? Whether it shows up in the form of a person's behavior, whether it shows up in, in, in terms of what's going on in the world with you know, pandemics and health related issues and politics and economics, whatever it is, you can meet the, the, the challenges, right? You, you can deal with hard things. So 
so whether that that situation or person, you know, wh whatever is coming in front of you, it is all about your response and how you choose to deal with the situation that really does determine your outcome. Because I can choose not to let certain external factors bother me or affect my life. And so I continue to create goals and I continue to think big and I continue to do the actions that require me to meet those goals. And I'm building a bigger, happier, more successful, enjoyable, sustaining life, regardless of what might be going on around me. And that doesn't mean that I am ignorant or I have my head in the sand. It's that I separate out the things that I can control versus what I can't control, right? So, and it's not an either or either, right? So, so maybe in terms of, um, what's happening in our country right now, I can exercise my right to vote. So that's as far as I can get into, con now I can take it to another level and get involved in, in you know, politics and, and, and really put that you know, as part of my vocation if that's where I feel my purpose and passion lies, right? But if not, where does your purpose and passion lie? So put your energy there. And so coming back to like these people that show up in front of us, um, it's, it's tough because, you know, if you allow a difficult person or a toxic situation to get out of control, it will steal your joy. It will literally take a year or two off your life if you let it, right? Because stress is such a toxic thing for our, for us, right? So we need to look at, all right, how do I build, you know, this, this toolbox, so I think number one, come from curiosity. Number two, stay neutral. Don't get sucked into your own emotions. Try to, you know, stay in a logic mode. Ask yourself some questions about what might be happening here to give you an opportunity to maybe strategize a little bit. Um, and, you know, again, stay calm. Stay calm and manage your own emotions because no one can make you feel anything. You decide how you feel you decide how you respond to it. So in, in that, you have to set some limits. You have to set limits and you have to set some boundaries about you know, how much of that person or that situation you're gonna allow to affect you. And I think that we can look at you know, the characteristics of a difficult person, but what about looking at the characteristics of a person who can meet those challenges, right? So when we look at ourselves and the characteristics we need to have to deal with this difficult situation, I think it's important that we establish boundaries and stay aware of our emotions so that we can kind of rise up from that situation. Sarah, I see you have your hands up. Yes, I um, just want to share something with everybody. Sure. If uh, you don't mind, um, but I've got to get to myself to a place where I can put my phone down. So um, I took an energy medicine yoga class and that teacher taught us this really great trick to kind of bring your head and your, like all the parts of your brain when you're in a stressful situation and you put one hand over your forehead and the other hand at the back at the base of your neck and just like breathe, uh, you know, like really deeply yeah, through your yeah, full time. Um, to get through like those uber stressful moments. Yes, that's great. I'll give you another tip since you opened the door here. So we've talked before and we'll talk more about the connection between your mind and your body. So another thing, if you feel really emotionally like overwhelmed, uh, maybe even a little, this, this is when you're feeling like really anxious. If you just rub your earlobes, in a circular motion and breathe in and out, that should really help regulate your nervous system. And within probably 30 seconds, you'll feel a difference. So that's another one. Um, and these are, these are important things to understand, you know, about keeping us within a certain boundary, right? Um, another thing I, I'll share with you uh, that would be a great tool, and a lot of this has to do with mindset. It, it all has to do with mindset, right? It's about how you set your mind on the way you're going to deal with this person. Now, if this is someone who is in your life in a reg on a regular basis, then get, get honest with yourself about this, right? Like, 
don't go okay I, I i'm sorry to mothers everywhere because i keep using mom as the example and i love my mom so this is not my personal experience but I, I, you know, let's say you know that your mom is that person who challenges you and who is a difficult person. Well, before you go there, before you answer the phone, like prepare yourself physically and emotionally for what may come. But also don't expect the worst every time either. Because wherever our mind goes is where we follow. So, you know, and that I'm just saying, you know, don't always expect to be in the fight. Right. And, and realize that there are no winners in the fight either. You're not winning. They're not winning. You're just trying to navigate and understand it. Um, and, and so the, the other thing that I want to make sure I say to you guys before I run out of time as a tool for you is what happens after that difficult situation is over. Because a lot of times the difficult person goes off and you're left feeling wounded and you're left feeling raw and you're left feeling emotionally drained perhaps. And so it's important that you recover quickly as quick, as quickly as possible. And, you know, maybe there are some things you're going to do to bring your body back into place. And, and, you know, like some of these metaphysical things that we just talked about, breathing is certainly going to be a, an important way for you to reduce stress anytime you're in stress or anxiety. Uh, so really check in with your breathing and maybe do some deep breathing exercises and really check in with your thoughts because it's very easy to allow that toxicity in if you don't protect yourself from it, right? So you could find yourself even subconsciously having some negativity, negative self-talk, maybe even, you know, blaming yourself somehow for this situation or, or just replaying in your head, like, why is it always this way? And, 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 you know, that is going to create um, a lot of negative baggage for you. So it's important that once that person walks away or the situation is over, what tools can you implement to recover? Right. And really be conscious of your thinking so that you don't get stuck in that negative self-talk. And so that you, you know, because we're a lot like Velcro and, and the things that are going on around us, the emotions can stick to us if we allow it. So I think, you know, you have to cleanse almost. Right. And I'll tell you that um, as a coach who deals a lot with behavior and who deals um, with some people who are in, in trauma sometimes, um, I've been taught by my master coaches to take care of myself because we can take on those feelings and thoughts and emotions, even inadvertently. Um, and one of the things that, believe it or not, can really help is water. It, it, water is a cleansing agent, right? So drink lots of water, maybe, you know, even make sure you take a bath at night or if the weather is good, you jump in your pool. Just get into water as much as possible because that really can cleanse you as as simple as it sounds, it does work. Um, and, and just take some time for self-care, depending on how difficult that situation was or that day was, um, you know, it's, it's important that you practice some self-care. And see, I'm not giving you a magic wand to change the other person. I hope you realize that. Like dealing with a difficult person is not changing the difficult person. That's, the, that's up to them. Isn't that the so serenity prayer? And the serenity prayer is perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Yes. See, if the if the if so-called difficult person is aware of their behavior and so-called difficult person realizes that their behavior is causing problems in their world, it's creating toxicity, it's creating broken relationships, it's it's keeping them from having success in their life. And for all I know, I could be talking to someone right now in our group who's taking a step back and saying, Maybe that's me. See, if, if said difficult person realizes what's going on with their behavior and wants to move forward and get help, then I, as a coach, can help difficult person because they want the help. Mm -hmm. But each of us as individuals, that's not what we're there to do. We're not really there. Even your best friend, may, you may not be able to help them. It depends on you know, where, where they are and if they're ready to move forward and change their behavior. And it's important to know whether you, or not you have the tools to really help them. They might need, you know, a coach or a therapist, depending on what's going on with them. But at, what I'm helping you with this morning is just how to navigate the conversations, the situations, and those people that may show up in your life more often 
um, you know, and, and that those situations are a result of, of the frequent uh, time spent with them. And realize that you have the power because that's probably one thing I'll close with is that a lot of times what happens when we are dealing with a difficult person on a regular basis or we're in a difficult situation on a regular basis, it can be very disempowering. And, mm -hmm. and it can feel like that person is just, like I said, stealing our joy and taking our power away. Well, only if you allow it. And so this is, this is the opportunity for you to have some awareness now. Hopefully I've raised some conscious thoughts here. And for you, you know, to kind of bring all this together that I've been talking about and come up with your own uh, toolbox and come up with your own strategy and, and know that also having that support system, right? Is there someone um, in your life that you can talk to when things, you know, come up and, and you deal with difficult people? Um, that is not allowing you to complain though. That could be another Monday morning more mojo topic. Complaining, write this down. Complaining is a garbage magnet. What do I mean by that's not my own phrase. It's um, complaining is a garbage magnet because when you really get into complaining mode, tell me who starts lining up to find solutions for you or with you. Nada, no one. Because what happens is most people will do one of two things. They're either going to affirm what you're saying because they think they're supporting you they don't know any better, right? So they, they allow you to get stuck in complaining and they're, they're affirming what you're saying and nodding their head, or they start to complain with you and probably try to out complain you uh, and say, oh, I know girl, let me, but let me tell you what happened to me. Oh my, you know, and it, it's, it just becomes this like environment of complaining. Um, so it's really important to understand when you do want to go to someone and share what happened to you and you think you're, you're seeking support, what is the healthy difference between here's what happened to me and I want to hear from you if you have any, any advice for me that might help me and just complaining and, and, and getting stuck in that, that other vortex too. So, so we, we had a lot of stuff out here this morning. Um, and I'm just curious what some of you might be thinking or if you have any final thoughts or ahas. Expectations. I think it's about managing expectations. And if you have a great support group or at least people that can understand <clears throat> your situation, that goes a long way. It does. And you know, Jill, I have to thank you for saying that word expectations because I had that in my mind to share as well this morning and I didn't get there. So I'll just say quickly that disappointment comes from unmanaged expectations. Whenever you get disappointed, it's because you had an expectation of the way it was supposed to go and it didn't go that way and therefore you're disappointed or that person didn't behave that way and therefore you're disappointed. So that is very important in this conversation. Yep. And that's why, why I say if you can come into it neutral and curious, that should move expectations out of the way. That was, that was awesome. Yeah. Hi, Michelle. Good morning. Uh, hi. Sorry. Um, yeah, for some reason I couldn't get in earlier, but I was listening on Facebook. Um, so my question is this, unmanaged expectations. So in my last career, I managed a group of people, which was really difficult because they were, experts in their fields, which I'm not. I'm more of a leader, manage, management, et cetera person. So I manage this team of experts, which um, can be a really difficult conversation when wow. someone deems themselves to be an expert and views you as a lesser knowledgeable person about, even though it's about their subject matter, that's how they view you. These are real technical people that are, et cetera. And when you have a conversation with them, once, you know, difficult people, et cetera, you are going to walk into the next conversation with expectations. So I, you know, it's hard to, especially as a manager, if you're saying, you know, let's talk, let's set expectations, ground rules, what we expect from our working relationship. And then you have the next meeting and they're still not quite eye to eye with you. 
like it's hard not to have those expectations. Yeah. So, and I, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to what you're saying. Yeah. So here's what I say. Um, it's so first of all, and you don't even have to answer this question, but I would ask myself, how do I know that that's how they view me? What evidence do I really have? So, because sometimes oh. Oh. it's the story we create in our own head that yeah. can start getting us a little jacked up right from Jump Street, right? Mm -hmm. So I would just say, do I know for sure they, they really view me that way? Or am I just interpreting something and assuming that? Or am I allowing my lack of knowledge and whatever that area is to make me feel vulnerable and make me feel less confident? So yeah, I mean, the way I, I approached it was I addressed it head on. Like, mm -hmm. yes, maybe I don't know as much about you as quantitative analysis, et cetera. But my area of expertise is this, which is why I'm in this position. Yeah. Like, that's kind of how I addressed it. So did a conversation it. ensue uh, that, that opened that up, like where you literally said that to each other? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then yeah. that, that's some evidence. So that's different. So yeah. I would say, I would say um, my suggestion would be in the, in the, if this happens again, is to say, first of all, is to always start in a positive affirming way. And I might say something like, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So here's what I would suggest. Since I don't have the same level of knowledge and experience as you do in this area, how can mm -hmm. you break this down to, for me in a simple to understand way so that I can continue to work with you on this. Yeah. Like, That's ultimately what ended up happening. Uh -huh. But it, you know, this was a five year relationship with this team of people, which, you know, at the beginning is rocky and rough and it took a long time. I had to learn how they each needed to be managed and et cetera, because mm -hmm. you can't do them all the same way. And, and yeah. It's, and so that, so if we had more time, that's a perfect, that would be the next level of this conversation is, so when you're dealing with someone who is in your life on a regular basis, it may not even be that these individuals were difficult themselves. It was just the situation you were all in was the challenge, right? Yeah. And so it's really about how do you create ground rules and how do you create boundaries and how do you understand the behavior profiles of the people in the group? Because right. you're a hundred percent right. The way that you work with, with Sarah is going to be different than the way you work with Melinda because of their different behavior profiles and how they process information and how they communicate. Um, and that, that, so when you're dealing with people on a, on a long-term basis, like in a work environment, that can be huge, you know, and I, uh, I do have experience using a lot of behavioral assessments. And uh, if anyone has any questions on that, because you're leading a group of people, you know, certainly reach out to me. Uh, we're working on that now, you know, in our companies, helping our leadership team understand more about behavior and communication so we can continue to work at a high level and support each other. And it's been amazing. Um, so yeah, without taking the time to interpret some of that, it could continue to be very difficult. Yeah. So but, Anna, my, just a footnote, my understanding is that in sort of corporate America, Many times when an advancement occurs, someone who's climbing that corporate ladder, what the corporation does is hire someone like yourself to assist the person to navigate the personal dynamic and understand how to function in a new place when you have a lot of personal, you can't help but bring who you are to the workplace. Yeah. So what happens is navigating becomes the challenge and how you read that. They rely on folks like yourself. Yes, 100%. And, and, you know, so that could be where the individual is, you know, I, I, if the person would be a coach to them, like a personal coach, uh, it could be a business coach, but it's really more about leadership. It's more about behavior. It's what we put in the bucket of life coaching uh, to help that person really understand, you know, how to show up and how to communicate. Um, and definitely you would want to hire a coach probably with a background similar to mine that understands leadership concepts, understands communication, behavior, because it's also, it's more about helping that person for them with themselves, but it's also about helping them understand how to interpret the people around them. So yeah, hundred percent for sure. For sure. So um, any other final thoughts? I know we went over this morning, but it seems like everyone uh, got something out of this as I know you always do. Um, anyone else have any final thoughts? 
Okay, I'm going to share some things in the Facebook group, some of these uh, discussion points that we shared this morning. So for because I, I am I'm sure there are some of you who really want to put some time into working on this. And uh, I'll put some information out there for you so it will help you with it. I am really grateful that you spent the uh, part of your Monday morning with me. It does make Mondays better to be together. So thank you for that. And um, I wish you an awesome day. I'll see you next Monday. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Have a great right, weekend. Thank you. Bye, you as well. Bye. -bye.